okay. Okay, we're working on the spare tire. I just quick sketched up these put these lines in here just as a reference for when I'm breaking these and I'm just gonna break these right in my vise here Bottom. What do you think of that? Mm. Okay, so now the strap wraps around and it goes across. And that's going to hold it, just like that. Think it'll work? Yeah. Probably have to get a little bit longer of those. Just like so. Okay, so here's what we got. We got these tapped in holding the strap. We've got our studs. And these each get a fender washer. This goes under here. It pops up. And these get a fender washer. They get a star lock washer. And this is valve stem down, by the way. And then a wing nut. hand tight. Just like so. 
Okay, so we've got that run up through our bolt up on the top. Strap runs back over the frame rail, right between there, over the roller, onto our capstan. So let's see what we got. Okay, the last thing I want to do is slip some of this up between the frame and the tire. Okay, that feels pretty good. I think that's exactly what we were after. I like it and if you look at it level with the bottom of the frame rail it barely sticks down so I really don't foresee that being a problem at all. Alright check it out I got this trailer here. It's a Zeman deck over. 20k GBW. It's got super singles. And uh, actually, my brother and I just bought this to flip it. But check out this deck height. It's over 36 inches tall to the deck height. Not only that, but you see how this deck is set down below the frame, below the outside frame of the trailer. That makes it very hard to load stuff with a forklift. So we've got a 36 inch plus deck height. Now here's my trailer, still have this truck sitting on it. And uh, you can see as, my as it sits here, my trailer's tilted a little bit to the back. So let's go near this axle, set of axles here and take a deck height measurement. Okay, to the dirt. We've got a 24 inch deck height. Now we do have a load on here, so it'll probably come up about an inch, so 24, 25 inch deck height. Over an entire foot lower than that trailer. Now, given that trailer does have a 20,000 pound GVW, which is much higher than my trailer. So the cool thing about this hitch is if you don't quite get it pulled all the way to the, the front part of the ball here, um, it still will spring load down and now as soon as I pull forward it will lock into place. Up the 1935 Chevy or GMC, rather, the thing went through a fire really bad fire. A lot of this iron on here lost its temper. I was hoping to be able to save some of it or at least sell it as yard art. I had zero interest, and uh, like I said, I salvaged a bunch of the sheet metal up near the front that wasn't super warped or damaged. Real shell headlight bezels, fenders, hood, dash, but all of this stuff was distorted or tweaked or like these rims here. I thought I might be able to salvage some of the rims, but no, I wouldn't trust those things going down the road. So it hurts a little bit anytime you have to scrap old American iron, but it is what it is. I did my best, uh, but the trailer's loaded up. Let's go ahead and tow it to the scrapyard and see how we do. Okay, just Went through the scale, we weighed 17,860 pounds. And uh, we're taking this back to their far driveway. And uh, he did mention there was a $5 per tire deduction on those front two tires. 
You can always tell what metal prices are doing by how much inventory the scrapyard is holding on to. And uh, we scaled at 4,680 pounds. They gave us uh, 120 bucks a net ton. And I had two tires at five each deducted off of that. Um, but it, it did great, towed fine. Not a bad load, worthwhile. Um, I'm always a little leery of, of heading through the scrapyard there. There's always nails and bolts and pieces of wire and other sharp objects all over the ground. They do a pretty good job of keeping the pathways swept, but it's always a possibility that you're gonna pick something up out of a pothole or a crack that they miss. One of those things, calculated risk. I checked my tires before I pulled back out on the street and uh, we didn't pick anything up this time. The other thing is I, I wish I could have got more footage of the uh, loading and unloading there, but they are they work quick there. They're really fast and efficient. Okay, let's go ahead and summarize this project. So, uh, how I ended up with a fender trailer as opposed to a deck over. I mentioned in the, in the first video that I was talking to a friend of mine who knows a lot more about tire and wheel combinations than I do. My original plan was to run low pros on this. He discouraged that. He said they wear out quicker. If you ever have any trouble on the road and you have to buy a tire, somewheres where you've broken down, he said you're not gonna find one. Mm -hmm. uh, the pros and cons didn't pencil. It worked out better to just go with something standard. In turn, that put my deck height a lot higher than I originally wanted. So mm -hmm. we've ended up now with a fender trailer. I've been able to work around the fenders. You can see they are a little uh, scratched up and um, worn from stuff going over top of them. I haven't bent them yet. They have held up very well. Uh, wood versus steel was another toss up. Personally, I prefer wood because I haul a lot of steel and steel on steel can get really slick, especially during the winter months. Uh, wood is a little bit cheaper outright and if you keep it sealed, it does hold up pretty well. Uh, this has, since I originally did it, has been sprayed once now with diesel and it has been sprayed once with a regular oil-based sealer. I usually catch it when I'm doing something else. We did a big concrete job and we had mm -hmm. diesel out for all the forms. I went ahead and hit my trailer deck with some of the excess diesel. Uh, I was sealing all my my fencing here on my personal property. I had a little bit left over. I went ahead and hit my trailer deck. Just one of those things. Keep maintaining it and it should last. Things I would do differently now that the project mm -hmm. is done. Um, I didn't add any chain storage. I just have the toolbox up front. It's full of all my tie down straps currently. No room for chains or binders. That was one thing that I was really on the fence about when I was doing the the welding, the iron fabrication on this trailer was, do I make some type of drawer or basket for chains and binders? I didn't. Um, I probably should have, whether it be a hatch that opens on the deck and um, reveals a, a basket, expanded mesh basket for chains and binders, whatever. Something like that would have been handy. Currently, I've got all my chains and binders in a milk crate that I bungee cord to the front. A little substandard for for me the other problem I've been running into is my battery that's a deep cycle battery it's I'm the second owner previously it was on a trolling motor on a boat and it's getting tired a couple of times now the beaver tail hasn't been able to lift up um, loads that it easily should have been able to and 100% is due to the battery so uh, I'm gonna have to put a bigger battery in 
most likely. And the only other thing that I've really noticed is when I lift this beaver tail up and then let it drop back down on the locks, now that everything is kind of settled in and uh, broken in, it's not quite 100% in line with the rest of the trailer. And all that that entails is me taking a little eighth inch shim and welding it on top of the lock. And that way it stays in there and it shims that back of that trailer up slightly. Other than that, it's been a great trailer. I've gotten a lot of good use out of it and a couple of friends have even borrowed it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.